<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome uh, to the Virtual Vortex Gallery Grand Opening. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we're going to let people start coming in, but I'm going to just go over uh, a little bit about this project. Uh, so about two months ago, I was volunteering at this uh, local gallery called The Switchboard in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Uh, and, uh, it was like the holiday show and I was like, I was like, oh, I want to get some, uh, Christmas gifts and holiday gifts and stuff. And, uh, so I went there to go check out the show, um, because I felt safe, uh, you know, very low, uh, amount of people were being allowed in and I'm always wearing a mask and stuff. So, and when I got there, I realized, you know, not many people would, you know, feel that, you know, confident obviously in, a, in today's world uh with covid uh going so i was like i actually asked the owner hey can i just photograph all the art uh so people can see it and maybe you know get something for the holidays so i came in a couple days later it was just me and the art and while photographing i was like what if uh there was a way <laughs> to make a virtual uh reality like almost video game of a 3d space that you could enter so hence here we are now uh the grand opening of that idea it just is a complete experiment uh this is our first ever show with 10 artists uh all coming mostly from the uh new england area uh we do have one special guest that's um from texas that actually uh, discovered this uh, show because I made a YouTube video about uh, how to do this on YouTube and he was like I want to submit and so we let him <laughs> and uh, yeah that's a cool story is this a random person that just found our video and now here here he is um, but yeah we're gonna g just go over a little bit about what's gonna happen uh, tonight so hold on I am gonna be multitasking tonight so you will have to bear with me so I'm actually gonna turn off me so yeah we're just gonna go over what's going on the slides here so um, hold on let me Share my screen on Zoom as well. And can you guys see that? All right. So we're just going to, I'm just going to show you. <laughs> I'm just going to show you uh, a little bit what's going on. So here's one of the first things. Uh, how do I grab it? I don't know. Can you guys see that? All right, there we go. So this is a donation-based uh, event. Uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, if you're interested in making any kind of donation so we can have future events. Um, and uh, I will also have that information at the end, so it will be thrown in there once in a while, but it's just going to go to the artist, future events, and a fundraiser, uh, which uh, Steph Derwin, one of our musicians, is having a fundraiser right now for trans tenders. Um, he will talk a little bit about that uh, when he performs, uh, telling you a little bit more about what that looks like. And then uh, over here, we're gonna talk about the schedule. So I'm welcoming you all right now. I'm gonna show you Siobhan Beasley's work because she's in Norway and she couldn't make it. Then we're gonna go off to Kyle, Lindsay, Ula, Sam, Van, Vivian, Bridget, Amy Titus, Christine, Steph Derwin. All these amazing, amazing artists are here. Uh, they're gonna be talking I'm going to be basically giving like a, a tour of the gallery and then we're going to have a musical uh, show 
at the end to celebrate that we survived this together, <laughs> this journey. Um, and then we have some funny things in here too. Check this out. I made this uh, this morning. Uh, so yeah, you know where your bathrooms are, so you can use those at any time. Uh, you, and you know, go grab a drink whenever you want. And it's also really cool to be kind, so just be respectful, be patient. Uh, this is gonna be a wacky time of uh, dealing with everything that's running in front of me, but we're gonna we're gonna get through this. Um, just a little thing about uh, about our. I, this might be too small for you guys, but I'm gonna just read it for you. But it basically is just kind of my vision and the mission. I made this this morning, so it's gonna change probably. But the Virtual Vortex Gallery's mission is to create a safe, open space where all art and artists are welcome always. No one is turned away. No art is turned away. Vortex Gallery's mission is always to give any and all artists, musicians a chance to be on this virtual pr platform with you. No matter what race, gender, spirituality, age, if they've done art since they were a baby or if they just started art yesterday. I'm an open-minded uh, gallery creator. Uh, Vortex Gallery is always a space where all and anyone is welcome uh, disrespecting or having hate speech, go do that somewhere else. Go vent that. Go talk to a therapist. And there's really cool ways to do that. You can actually text 741-741 home, and it's a really good way to get a lot of resources. I use it all the time when I'm having a bad day. Just text that, and they'll give you a bunch of people to talk to, and it's free, and it's awesome. Highly recommend it. Um, next thing... We're just flying through these because we're going to go right on to Savan next. Um, so here, what I would like you guys all to do is to go check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Go like us. Go find out more about us. Uh, tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell your strangers. Uh, you know, just tell people about this thing and about your experiment uh, experience here. Uh Basically, at the end or throughout the show, if you click on the uh, the link to uh, the uh, link tree, I have on the bottom a survey, and it would be super awesome for you if you did come uh, to give us your biggest feedback ever. Uh, there's a bunch of questions, but there's also fill in the blanks, so you can write an essay or you can even email me. If you're like, oh my god, you know, this changed my life, uh, whatever you want. So, that being said, I'm now going to be sharing a video. And uh, this is a video of an interview with Siobhan Beasley, who couldn't make, us, make it here tonight because she's sleeping. But we're going to make it feel like she's here. So, we're going to do that. So, um, Katie, if you want to actually help me with this, because I, I'm still figuring out how I'm going to do this, and if if it doesn't oh, if it doesn't work, um, we'll just keep moving, and I'll just do her stuff like she was here. So, let me just triple check. that we can get that going. You know what, I'm gonna just do Siobhan Beasley stuff because I think that'll be easier. Is it a video that you need to share? Yeah, but I want to make sure it's shared on Facebook Live, too. So okay, I'm not sure how that's going to work. I didn't really think that out. And I'm going to just keep moving. So we're right on time. So if you do you want to. Perfect. Hold on. Show the artwork and then. We're just going to go to her stuff and I'm going to read a little bit about it. But we will also 
if uh, one of my artists that knows where that YouTube interview is can actually put that in the chat or put that somewhere. So if anyone has any questions about this artist, I'm just going to go off of my experience. Um, so does everyone see uh, Siobhan's work? You're not sharing on Zoom at the moment. Okay, hold on. Thank you. Share screen. How's that look? How's that, huh? Beautiful. We're doing it? All right. All right. So, yeah, I'm just giving a tour, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, we're at Siobhan Beasley's work. Uh, she's a really close mentor of mine, uh, photographer. I met her uh, when I was going to college. Um, her work is incredible. Mm, excuse me. Let me have some water. Her work is very incredible, as you can see. Uh, I know her as a photographer, but she makes all these uh, illustration pieces, too. Um, so when you're in this gallery, you can click on any of the images. And I'll do this like slow motion uh, zoom in on the pieces. And if you click this little icon, it'll tell you a little bit about the work. So she made this during the quarantine, as a lot of us artists are having a little bit more time to work on these different um, experimental kind of pieces. I, I, I find this very experimental, but she was opening up to me and she found this, you know, a, a healing experience is what I kind of took from it. Um, but Siobhan Beasley is a fashion photographer who loves whose love for experimentation can be seen in her striking photo illustrations and images. Her love for nature, all things creative and core values of beauty, truth, love, and justice are themes throughout her work. Siobhan uses interesting angles, colors, concepts, and narr narrative to produce images that evoke emotion and thought. So yeah, um, I mean, I've seen her do so many things uh, from when I first met her we were doing she was helping me do lots of fashion shoots together and um, we can actually even go to I her. I have the video ready if you want to use it or you have it. Um, we're already I'm gonna just keep going <laughs> if that's okay. Yeah. All right. Um, it's it's uh, it's it's 10 minutes long and we're three minutes in so i i, I don't know i just kind of want to keep going i guess but yeah so this is kind of where she started for me like when i was introduced to her uh she made these very very colorful uh photographs and she's kind of done a little bit of everything where she's done a lot of advertisement work with um you know uh product uh design uh photoshop design uh siobhan uh also inspires me all the time where she makes these amazing uh animations of uh usually models but she also has been doing these uh full photo illustrations that kind of come alive uh in front of you um let me go to a really good one for an example, but uh, we even talk about it live in the video about how she just kind of sees something and then makes all the connections in her mind and then brings it to life. Uh, she obviously can uh, speak uh, for herself a lot, but and you can find out more from her interview, but I highly, highly recommend uh, all artists take a moment to look at some of Siobhan Beasley's work because um, not only is it experimental, I think it, it reaches all different uh, realms that uh, are kind of happening with art. Uh, she, she allows herself to experiment with uh, 
the things that she's uh, photographing for. Uh, her voice is very consistent. As you see all these pictures in front of you right now, do they all talk to each other? Do they all make you feel like you're in her world and you've been brought in to this exciting, uh, incredible space? Um, I know every time I have entered uh, Siobhan Beasley's universe, I've literally been taken away uh, to a different different place. Um, and I, I think it really consistently shows uh, in her work. And for the next f five minutes, if you guys uh, want to take a step back and uh, I can even show you um, how to enter the gallery. If you guys want to look at these pieces that are in the gallery uh, in person, um, someone can leave it in the chat, but there's a link um, on my on my link tree right now that if you click it, you can actually enter this space. And to do that, um, basically you'll be, I'm gonna just refresh. You'll be welcomed to this little loading screen and you'll be, uh, you'll see this little thing and you'll, you can just press enter. And then you can use your mouse if you click somewhere, you can go away, but you can also use your arrow keys to go forward and back, left and right. And if you click your mouse and move, you can spin. And what's really cool is if you click on any photo, it'll do that zoom animation. And then if you walk over here, you'll see Siobhan Beasley's work that we're talking about right now. So this is the virtual reality coming to a reality. We're all here in the space. Uh, we're safe. We can be in the comfort of our, of our own homes, uh, grabbing another glass of wine. Um, and yeah, I, I definitely think everyone should uh, share the YouTube link to find out more about Siobhan so we can start moving on to one of our guests that's actually here, one of our special, special guests. I um, want to start off with Kyle because his story is very cool about how he got here. And um, he has a really cool community that um, is behind him. So we're going to get Kyle um, on video and we're going to start moving him on here. So, uh, oh, there he is. Hey, Kyle. Yeah. <clears throat> Give me Hello. one second, Kyle. Let me Can you hear me? Yeah, let me just make sure that we have you on both platforms. Yeah, I don't see on the uh, Facebook one or whatever. That's fine. Um, yeah, that works. Let me figure that out really quick. You want me to start talking about stuff or just can can people hear me on Facebook? I guess they can, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And you're you're there on Facebook now. Okay. So you can tell us a little bit about you and tell us about your work. Yeah, sure. Uh, I've done a lot of different art things over the years. I guess that's the fastest way to walk through it. But uh, I've kind of <clears throat> kind of accumulated into what I would describe as a whimsical surrealist. Um, that's the way I define myself at this point, but I do a variety of things. I do a uh, cartoonish style um, characters and whatnot, but I, I, I really fall into, I mean, this kind of way my brain works is, is kind of in, in the surreal world. So uh, the one that you're looking at right now, uh, it's a two foot by two foot on wood. It's mixed media. 
And I wanted to create a world that you had to um, ignore certain things to actually view it. Um, I forget what I actually named the definition of it at this point, you know, time goes by and whatnot, but what was it? To observe and yet disregard. So, so I started with, it's an eyeball. And then I was like, well, I want it to not be an eyeball. I want it to be in an environment that you can fall into, that you can be a part of, but then that environment like spreads out into your world. And so I created this frame that's actually a part of the painting uh, so that some of the elements could, could escape. And then with a lot of my ideas, at least the surreal ones, I like to put figures in there. And these figures, like in this one, they're, they're kind of undefined, but it's like when I put them in there, it's a place where your mind can go. Like, I feel like to me, bring the viewer into the painting is like, oh, wouldn't it be cool to fly a kite back in the back part of this? And uh, what if I could sit in this reality or be a part of it or interact with it? So that's, that's at least my mindset behind the characters. And then uh, this one with, <laughs> You want to talk about the running tree? <laughs> this is, it came from a lot of different directions, honestly. I mean, I, I could describe it different ways at different times, but uh, I, I was looking at a tree that had a weird twist to it, and um, and it kind of looked a little humanish, human esque. So I, I that in combined with some other stuff, I I wanted to create this tree running through a virtual world where the, the world is saying stop you can't go that way you can't do this um you know the arrows are coming at him uh he's even a tree he's not supposed to run so uh you know it and and the 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 leaves aren't even leaves it's like uh they're they're heavy weight weighted uh, rock forms that are breaking off like leaves would be flying off the back of it. So I feel like, you know, to me, in a way, uh, I feel like um, it's a little bit of a self portrait as far as as an artist. Uh, I've got a lot of weight over, over the years on me and I, getting into the surrealist stuff and doing that again. I feel like I, I've got to break away from a lot of the previous uh, ideas of how I should be or what I should create. And uh, anyway, <laughs> I could go on about it, but that's that's what that is. <laughs> There's a question in the chat if you're open to answering. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. It says, do you dream a lot? Is that where you get inspiration or are these more from waking yeah. thoughts from Lindsay? I, I'm one of these weird people. I thought that everybody was like this, but I've just I've explained, I find other people similar, but I just don't stop seeing things like, uh, I, I never saw black when I closed my eyes. I, I've just always, I've always got something going on, going on visually in my mind. And um, I've always been fascinated too by just uh, some of the, the most famous surrealists out there. You know, Dolly is a big influence. And at the same time, um, like Escher, I know that they don't go together, but I kind of feel like Escher was a surrealist, but not really identified as one. Because if you look at his art, it's like, what the heck? I mean, this isn't reality. This is another world altogether, some other dimension. So at the same time, I like to uh, like, what if a lot of things like, you know, if there are other dimensions, I don't think they're anything like this here. They would be something just completely whack. And and so that's kind of where my mind goes on that stuff. I don't know if that answered the question, but I tried. I'm sure it helps. <laughs> so yeah, does um, more people have questions for Kyle 
about his art and about his journey? I'm seeing some more on Facebook. Yeah, please read them out. Sure. Samuel says, which medium are you creating with? Um, it, it depends. Uh, I like acrylic. I really love acrylic, but like these two um, are colored pencil and acrylic. And um, I actually started with chalk uh, to get everything down and start getting the forms down. Um, the tree has much more colored pencil in it. <laughs> it's where a lot of the detail is, but um, I do like mixed media and I like working on wood for some reason. It, it's to me, it's much better than canvas. I don't, I like to create my own texture if I'm going to create texture. I don't know. So that, uh, I, I hope that answered the question. <laughs> Yeah, are there any more questions for Kyle? I think there was the last one. It's more of a follow-up question to that then. Uh, do you ever work in digital work? Uh, yes, that's what I, I have done for many years. I started, so I'll do it real quick. I started out with oils. I went to uh, pastels. I, I didn't like pastels that much, so I went to... Uh, watercolor I, I fell in love with airbrush uh, i'm just now getting a new getting my airbrush set up again uh and then i've always been a a geek so uh, i fell into uh the digital world and, and couldn't get out of it and i've pretty much been there ever since and um yeah i create these little coloring books because <laughs> i like patterns uh, you'll probably see more of it in my artwork uh I've actually got some that are a little bit more because uh, Escher, you know, I mean, he's not the only one that's influenced me there, but yeah, I don't even know what, I went down a, a weird road there, so I don't know. Did I answer that question or I think, I think it might have. Oh, oh, uh, what was it like? Oh, and then I, I, I still do digital work right now. Yeah. In fact, any anything that I've done is a little promo or I do. Um, if you go to my blog, all those images uh, I do digitally. Uh, after I write the blog, I do a quick um, little digital illustration. I think the bottom ones are like combinations of photos and digital stuff or whatever. But um, I might. I have a day job where I work at a place called Studio Tribe and, and we do a lot of digital work. It's, uh, but this is my uh, side fun stuff with painting and printmaking and some digital stuff. And I sell, print. I sell prints of every, pretty much everything that I, I do. If I like to at least provide it as a, you know, a print. Yeah, Kyle, these are very, very inspiring, incredible. Uh, when you submitted your work, I was like, what? I My my jaw obviously hit the ground. I was like, uh, what? Who's this person reaching? Oh, I just made a YouTube, like, channel. Yeah. You know, so, like, the fact that I just made a video and then you reached out and then I, you <laughs> submitted these pieces. I had no idea when I said yes, what, what I was going to get, you know? And then when I saw them, I was like, uh, wow, what a, what a world, um, yeah. it would be. So yeah. everyone, uh, definitely check out, uh, Kyle Wood stuff. If you do click on the photos inside the virtual gallery and you press the info, you can click on his website. You can go check out Kyle Wood on Instagram. Uh, he's pretty active on there in my experience and uh, he's very responsive to his email. Everyone uh, thank uh, Kyle Wood so much in the chat, please, please give him all the love because um, we are going to be moving on with the tour to our next uh, guest. So Kyle, if you want to say goodbye yeah. or... <laughs> nice meeting everybody yeah. you know, I can't see everybody, but uh, I hope you all enjoy
and uh, I'm going to stay here for this too. <laughs> of course, of course, hang out. So yeah, now we're going to get Lindsay in here. Looks like you're already ready to go. Hello. So uh, everyone, this is Lindsay Hall. Lindsay, how about you tell everyone a little bit about you now? Okay, you guys can hear me. Okay, we're good. Um, my name is Lindsay. I'm 24 years old and I live on the North Shore of Massachusetts as a lot of the artists here do. Um, I work in a bunch of different mediums. I've been doing art since I was little and I've never really stuck with one thing for too long. Um, so I, I'm kind of all over the place. I bounce around. I went to, I went down to art school in Richmond, Virginia. I went to VCU Arts and originally planned on majoring in art education. Didn't end up going through with that. Uh, I ended up not being able to choose since I'm like so all over the place in terms of what I like to do. I couldn't choose a discipline. So I did studio classes in basically everything and then got a major in art history. So not even in an actual studio pro um, like process, but I got to do a lot while I was there. So the works that I have in this gallery are both, um, they're both continuations from stuff that I started in one of my painting courses when I was down in Virginia. I've since moved back up to Massachusetts. And the first one that's the hand is, Probably the one I'm a bit more excited about because it's more of a personal series. The other one I'll get to in a minute, but I cre created that one more for a gallery. Um, so the one with the hand, it's mixed media, acrylic paint and embroidery through the canvas once the painting was varnished. So uh, it's gonna be, it's a series I've had in my head for a really long time and just had never taken the time to actually make it until um, late 2019. I started, I started and I started small. So this is a nine by 12 inch uh, painting and it's of my left hand. So the whole series is, I'm calling them segmented self portraits because it's not a traditional self portrait. It's not my face, um, but it's still part of me <laughs> and it's there, the series title is going to be, it's all natural. So it's going to be my body and then different elements of nature are going to make up the embroidery. And this one was poison ivy was the inspiration. So that's, it's titled, let me be like leaves of three, let me be. Um, yeah. And I actually, I just started working on another piece in that series in 2020, but I finished the painting not I haven't started the embroidery so that's to come soon and then the second piece in here is called Calfecta uh, simply because there are three of them and I thought trifecta and cows <laughs> um, so this one's a little bit more of a continuation from something I started in college uh, because I started painting all of my canvases black um, and this was, you know, in my painting course, I was given really free range, there was no prompt, and I ended up deciding to focus on different farm animals. It was right after I decided that I was going to try to stop eating meat, or at least cut down substantially, so I was really trying to think about how I could portray farm animals in a different light. So originally, I had this really big three by three foot painting and it was a cow in a pasture and it was like blue, blue sky and bright green grass and I hated it. So I just threw black all over the canvas and ended up doing this really like, like sketchy kind of brush strokes of these two Highland cattle. And um, funny enough, that ended up getting picked up by a gallery up in Massachusetts and it sold like right away. So I ended up, um, after I moved back here, I was being supported by that gallery and they were looking for some more work. So that's where this piece came in. Um, and there's a farm, I can't remember where in New Hampshire, but they 
raise Highland cattle. So I went up there one day and took a bunch of photos and all of the cows there are super photogenic. So this was an actual photo that I got. Um, and all of the cows had names, like they all had ear tags with names. So I know the one in the middle is star, but I don't, I don't remember the other ones. So Lindsay, um, how about we check out a little bit more about you and your website and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what's your what's your, one of your favorite things to make lately? So I would say, I mean, I'm really personally excited to continue the Embroidery on Canvas series. But the majority of my work, because I do, at least for the time being, it's kind of happenstance with, you know, the pandemic this past year that I haven't gone out to work in an exterior location. So I've really been doing art full time. So commissions, I know that's where you're going with this. Um, commissions are a really big part of what I do, um, mainly portraiture. So I do a lot of animals, um, which are really fun. And those are almost entirely done in oil pastel and yeah I also do people um, which I don't use oil pastel for I do people in graphite or acrylic paint and um, yeah and then I also do house portraits in acrylic and watercolor but I'm also like bouncing around so I've also done stuff in soft pastels and I did a collage, which I didn't end up really liking very much, but I am kind of open to trying a lot of new things. So you'll see just one-offs. There's one house I did in colored pencil and I found out I didn't like doing it in colored pencil. So I don't offer that anymore, but lots of, lots of commissions. So does anyone have any questions for Lindsay and her work? I see one um, question in the Zoom chat, at least. Vivian, the gallery, it was um, Red Tractor Trading Company in Rockport, Massachusetts. It's not there anymore, unfortunately. Um, they, you know, were closing for the season and then it was kind of lucky. They were happy that they did because right after, you know, COVID happened. So they are still an entity that's in existence, but they don't have a location, a permanent location at the moment. Lindsay, um, tell us a little bit about one of your new things that you're doing. At, what is it called? A Patreon? What's that? Oh, <laughs> yes. So one of my like big goals for 2021 is to foster more community like within the arts. So um, and it's also so the Patreon, something I've been working towards for over a year now. So I just, as of February 1st, it's five days ago, I launched a Patreon page, um, which is really exciting. So, you know, it's, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a platform where creators can share exclusive content with people that pledge a certain amount each month. So I have mine, there are five different tiers, $2 to $20. and yeah, it's, it's really great. And I feel like I've already, you know, I'm growing my close knit community and it's, it's really nice. So if um, anyone wants to, maybe we have time for one more question. If anyone has a question for Lindsay before we uh, keep moving, Lindsay is a, uh, one of the first uh, people that submitted to the gallery uh, when I first started this project I was telling her all about it and then she's like I'll submit and uh, yeah I was already a huge fan of her work so I was very excited and honored to have her here on our first uh, gallery opening as one of the first artists in here so everyone please give a lot of love to uh, Lindsay uh, in the chat go check out her Instagram, I think is the best way to see her day to day and like what's what's going on. And she's very responsive, very, very, very professional. Um, and definitely check out the website. So Lindsay, want to thank everyone. 
Yes, thank you all for having me. This is exciting. <laughs> all right, Lindsay, thank you so much. So we're just going to keep on moving. <laughs> uh, we have Ula next. Uh, Ula actually was uh, volunteering at the switchboard where, um, you know, I kind of started thinking about making this virtual uh, vortex gallery space. And because we were working together, I was telling her about it. So she kind of had a front frontline pass to experience of being able to get in here first. So Ula's going to talk a little bit about her and her work. Ula, how are you doing? I'm well. Hi, everyone. My name is Ula Grabski. I'm 19 years old. I'm from Haverhill, Mass. And yeah, I'm really excited to be here. My favorite medium, I'll talk a little bit about myself. My favorite medium is definitely painting, which is what both of these are. I do enjoy drawing and I just started embroidering, but painting is definitely my favorite. I started becoming more interested in art in probably my freshman year of high school. And I started taking classes throughout high school and that my interest really continued and started to grow. So I continued it in college and I attended Northern Essex Community College in Haverhill where I just got my associate's degree yesterday <laughs> in liberal arts. And yeah, this painting right here is called Thank you. <laughs> this painting right here is called Isn't It Weird? And it's acrylic. And I made it in around August, I believe. And yeah, it's pretty large. And then the one on the right is called Marry Me on Tuesday. And it's mostly oil. The whole background is oil. But then there's a few mixed media elements, like the strawberry, the largest strawberry is actually paper on an up it's just paper with gouache on it and then I sewed it onto the canvas and then the two or three other strawberries are marker and then I sewed those onto the canvas as well and then I think there's some other random sewing and there's also some like plastic bubble wrap that was deflated that I sewed on I don't know I try and I haven't really done this since but I try and just kind of shove stuff onto the canvas sometimes that add some dimension and interest and yeah these paintings were the first I created during the quarantine like the heavy quarantine period and they were both pretty exciting for me because I feel like after high school I really hadn't done anything that was my own style that wasn't an assignment until these paintings and I really like the way both of them turned out and I feel like it really motivated me, motivated me to keep creating and now that I look back on these two paintings I've created probably like 10 more since August and I see that they really just sparked some kind of motivation so yeah so uh Ula, I'm gonna go uh to your website a little bit cool and I see a question oh yeah no, I really have never done collage. I don't really enjoy it. <laughs> I've done it like on a small scale, but I've never really put that much time into collage. I really never even sketch paintings out. Like I will just start on a canvas and normally I start with a face because faces are my favorite thing to paint and then the rest kind of comes together randomly. So yeah, but I think collage would be a good idea, a good idea, and I also think sketching would be a good idea because it would probably be a better result, better composition. <laughs> so, um, does anyone have um, more questions for Ula and her work and her journey at only nineteen years old? <laughs> her work's amazing. Thank you. Ula, um, 
I'm gonna ask you a question. <laughs> Oops. Let me get out. Of here. So, where did you originally start? Like, what what was the first thing that you're like? I was there a certain day that you just woke up and was like, "This is what I want to paint," or like, how how does that process work for you? Like recently or. Uh, yeah, I guess, like, where did you start, and then n now how did it progress to where you are now? Yeah, so I think in high school I was really, I took random classes, and I was kind of just surprised by how my interest in art was continuing, because normally I get obsessed with things and then quit them, <laughs> honestly, and yeah, so I kept with that, and then I did an AP studio course that lasted two years. And so I was creating a lot in that. There's some pieces here that were in that, but, and then like, I just really enjoyed creating all sorts of things. And, but I didn't think that I had the capability or motivation to do things on my own time and have my own ideas. And I really didn't until this year. I was mostly doing stuff that were all assignment based, like that painting right there was for an application. And I really never did stuff that was my own idea. Like that was my own thing that I wanted to do by myself. And I think just over time, I kind of got off my interest in art. And then really in this quarantine, probably June is when I just picked up the canvas and started painting and it came together and I liked the way it turned out. And then, so now I just feel, now I've just really told myself to just keep making and keep making. And a lot of things I make, I really don't like, but I still don't get discouraged and just try and keep making stuff because some things are going to be good. So that's worth it. <laughs> and it's the thing I enjoy the most. So yeah. It's a really, really, really good answer, Ula. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. You know, I think, you know, quarantine, we all can agree, like, as terrible and horrible as this experience together has been, uh, we also have found ways to refine ourselves through art. And, yeah, it's really cool to hear that you kind of, you know, picked up the canvas again and now you're exploring again and you're uh very very are, are you embroidering as well like i think you yeah, mentioned it a little just, bit but it, what's this what's going on here yeah this was a gift you? oh yeah. that's that's a gift well yeah i i, I made the gift for someone. oh okay there you go <laughs> but yeah i i do like embroidering i like Lindsay's style of the embroidering on the canvas i'd like to explore that at some point but yeah, I like it. I want to get into sewing clothes and everything. And I feel like embroidering is kind of in that range, but yeah. Yeah. If anyone has any uh, last minute questions, we probably have time for one more or uh, maybe one some, the... yeah. Yeah. There was one in the chat on Facebook that I posted about the paintings from the gallery that you submitted um what was the thought behind the two paintings maybe that's a broad question but do you have any last comments regarding that yeah so the thought between these two paintings really like i said there's never really a distinct thought behind my paintings i just try and start with something and then go from there and try and make it work to be a nice visual experience so the answer is really there wasn't a thought behind these two paintings but with the first one, I'm um, the one on the right, I, my goal is to make it more mixed media. So I guess that was some kind of thought. And then the one on the left, I think has been interesting for me to analyze because like I said, there wasn't a distinct thought, but now stepping back from it, I can kind of piece together some subtle meanings that I didn't have the intention of having, but so like the title, isn't it weird? And then I have it written on the top part could be totally relating to being in quarantine in this whole year <laughs> and, yes, yeah, and then yes. like there's some other <laughs> elements about it like I have a man smoking and there's a wine bottle like that could be related to quarantine a lot of people have turned to 
those kind of substances as coping mechanisms, not personally, but I can totally see that. And like the light bulb I can see as being a symbol for ideas that I felt really motivated with painting and ideas during that time. So yeah, there wasn't a distinct thought, but I think it's always interesting since I don't usually start with a certain idea to gather. Ula, I, I love I love your work so much and everyone definitely needs to follow Ula, Ula's journey and and keep on uh, putting some fire underneath her butt to keep on making more <laughs> art. Uh, quarantine feels like it's gonna be here for a while. So get her get her making more art. Um, <laughs> everyone thank uh, Ula for being here. Ula, you wanna say anyone say anything to anyone? Yeah, thank you everyone for having yes. me. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> thank you everyone. Uh, so now we're going to move on to Sam. Um, Sam I actually met in a Facebook group. Uh, so Sam, you can actually bring up your video and there you are, Sam. How are you doing? Hi. How's everyone? Um, okay. I, my name is Samantha Blumenthal. Uh, I'm 20 years old and I'm from Lakeville, Massachusetts. Um, I'm a photographer. So I always kind of was into art as a kid, just like drawing and painting and like making jewelry and all that kind of stuff. I was just always kind of an artistic kid. Um, and then in high school, I took graphic design. As I went to a trade school and that was my trade. So I had a lot of background using like Adobe and Photoshop and stuff like that. Um, but I kind of Photography is something that I, I kind of started that. I mean, I guess you could say I started it like when I got my first camera and I was like fucking 10 years old or something, but I really started to actually get into it once I turned like 14 or 15 um, and I got a DSLR and that was just kind of um, where it started for me. But I really kind of got more into it up towards like my junior, senior year of high school, started taking people's senior portraits and I bought myself uh, Photoshop in Lightroom and a couple of presets to start out. Um, and basically since then, I've just kind of trying to keep going with it. And I've met a lot more people uh, and worked with a couple of other models and like clients and it's been pretty cool. And I'd eventually like this to be my job um, because right now I just work at a grocery store uh, and I just do this on the side. And where I live, it's really, it's a small town. So it's kind of hard to find clients around here. That's why I'm joining all these groups trying to I don't know, meet new people and figure out how to get my stuff out there. Um, like Andy helped me start my website, um, which was really cool. And that's been really helpful. Um, yeah, so basically, okay, I'll go with this first um, photo. It was um, my friend Hillary, she's a model and she also goes to fashion school. So we work together all the time. I like to do a lot of fashion photography. This one, I didn't have any specific inspiration going into. I just wanted to take her outfit and go out and see what I could like work with it, you know, and just like see what I could make with what I had. And I really liked how it turned out. We found this um, dugout and I just really liked the lighting in here and the way that like the shadows are on her face and the outfit and the colors in the background. Like I just think it, it worked together really well. Um, I shot them with my Canon 80D and then I have an 18 to 35 millimeter 1.8 lens. Um, that's probably my favorite setup, what I use the most. Uh, I didn't use the flash for this photo because I just really liked how the lighting looked. Um, but yeah, this she's a good friend of mine and I enjoy taking pictures with her. Um, and then the second one, the inspiration was kind of like, this is my friend Bella um, and she was, really happy about Taylor Swift's new album, Folklore. And so the inspiration behind that was kind of just like those vibes, wanted to look very like Woodland Fairy-like. And I think we did a really good job with that. I loved how the sky looked that day. Um, it was actually when <laughs> there was smoke from the fires in California, but it just, the sun looked so cool going down and I really like how it turned out. Now just like, I love working with natural light and like nature and stuff like that. Um, for this, I use the same camera and then a 50 millimeter lens, which I actually like better. It makes everything look more like dreamy. But yeah, it's a little bit about me and my work. 
let's uh, check out your website and maybe uh, some people can start having some questions coming in in the chat for uh, Sam. What would you say to someone that says they're not photogenic? Um, honestly, it's <laughs> taking pictures by yourself is kind of hard. So I feel like a lot of people think they're not photogenic. But as a photographer, it, once you get the model comfortable, I honestly feel like you can make anyone look good. Um, it just depends on like your angles. And I just like when it looks natural. And I feel like that makes a lot of people look pretty good. Um, how much of a good photo is the model versus the photographer? What would you mean by that? Um, I think, I mean, the model is definitely the focus of the whole photo. So like they have to kind of be comfortable in themselves and know how to, you know, move their body, which is kind of hard to figure out at first. It feels awkward, but once you've gotten them comfortable enough, I feel like just being relaxed and like being who you are just kind of makes the photo what it is. And obviously the photographer puts in the work to find, you know, the angles, the lighting, the editing. Um, but I feel like it's, it's a good like collab, you know? working together to kind of make it good. What I really like about you, Sam, is how uh, you are very like courageous and you put yourself out there and you put yourself in a lot of groups and you, you reach out to people. And, uh, you know, I think doing that, you're here now, you're in the gallery. I mean, just because <laughs> yeah. you were reaching out on a Facebook group and now look at you, you're in here <laughs> sharing your art with a bunch of artists and, and people that appreciate art. Uh, obviously, everyone loves pet photography, right? Yeah, I've done this a couple your dog? photos. Yeah, that's um, my dog. His name is Carl. I take those just for fun and to like show to my parents because I just love I love taking photos of animals. Sometimes it can be a little tricky, but I feel like they're some of my best pictures. I think everyone loves a good uh, animal picture. And it's it's mm. interesting so far, a lot of the artists so far, we all relate to animals. Um, so we're, we're, what do you want to do next? Like what's some of your, what's some of your uh, goals this year uh, as a photographer in, in quarantine? How are you dealing um, with that? It's been kind of difficult trying to like find clients, especially recently, because I feel like I got a lot more when I was in high school. I was taking a lot of senior portraits, but now that everyone I know has grown up, it's kind of hard. I'm trying to expand my circles to people from other towns and like the city because where I live is kind of the middle of nowhere. So basically what I'm working on this year is just trying to find more clients. I'd like to do like some family portraits and stuff like that. I've done a couple in the past and I really liked them. Um, but yeah, just trying to find new people to work with. And I've met a lot of new people, models and stuff from these Facebook groups. Uh, so it's been really good. Sam, uh, if no one has any more questions or anything, um, what would you say to a photographer that's like trying to get started? What, what, would, what, what advice would you give to? Uh, um, I feel like my best advice is like watch a lot of YouTube videos about other photographers and like just learning how to edit, learning how to frame shots, like everything, because I taught myself how to do all of this. And um, basically how I taught myself is from YouTube. It was really helpful. Um, one of my favorite photographers that was really helpful for me in a couple of years ago was Jessica Whitaker. Um, I would say definitely check out her video. She's really helpful in it. Um, it can teach you a lot without having to do like classes. If you're focused enough on it and you're into it, you can teach yourself a lot. Amazing, uh, Sam. Thank you so much for submitting your work and being here tonight. Everyone make sure to check out Sam's work. It'll be in the chat. Um, some of the artists will be sharing that or she can even share it. Uh, Sam, you wanna thank everyone? <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. It's been really cool. Yeah, Sam is really awesome. Uh, super, super uh, open and uh, super nice. Um, definitely reach out to her. She'll respond. Um, we're going to be moving on to another uh, artist that's in our gallery. 
uh, Van. Uh, Van, actually, I want you to start off by telling a little bit how you discovered the Virtual Vortex Gallery and that journey, and now then talk about your work. Uh, okay, well, my name is Van Griffin. I'm 25 from Boston, living around the Cambridge Watertown area. Uh, I discovered the gallery just, I think I just saw like your Instagram story or something. I followed you because you're a local photographer and on my photography Instagram, I just was trying to network or something at some point. I honestly don't even remember how it happened, but every time I see opportunities like this, you know, I go out and grab them. I just thought it'd be fun. Uh, I'm not exactly an artist like the rest of them. I, I can paint digitally, but if you gave me an actual brush and some watercolors, I couldn't paint a portrait if my life depended on it. Uh, these pieces that I have here are my first time working in a voxel 3D art style. Uh, it's a combination between Magic of Voxel which, and Blender, which are both free. Uh, I think they're both open source programs. Um, this, it's, they're all from the same series which is the like the slice of life series or whatever, where I just take a corner or a little cut of a environment and try to just make it really nice, neat. And I use a very specific lens and isometric uh, camera angle. It makes everything look kind of like a dollhouse, you know? Um, this one was inspired just because like, that's kind of what my room used to look like when I was younger, very neat and organized. But like, as I get older and I have all these different projects, like your workspace just gets absolutely crazy. So this was my first attempt using the program. So I want to start doing something very, very simple. So I just had this nice, clean, organized scene in my mind and tried to translate that as well as possible. Uh, it's kind of hard to show from the picture, but there are a lot of different textures and materials that I use in there. Like I have glass, two different types of glass at different opacities. I have like glowing textures. I have multi-point lighting and stuff like that. Uh, not too impressive when you find out it's all just rendered by the computer afterwards, but like the idea is there, you know. Uh, this one is just a, like a cyberpunk style, like a street corner. I assume this is what all streets are gonna look like in like 30 years. Um, the, all the, the the signs and stuff are just nods to different games or movies or books or something from that genre. Uh, yeah, there's not much to say about these. I'm sure that over time when I actually learn how to master these programs, I'm going to create something a lot better. But this was, a, I believe, a very good start to it. I want to say, uh, you know, I've, I've definitely even tried. And uh, this is incredible. I think this is like such like a cool um, niche. Do you remember, uh, there was this like thing called, uh, I wanna say it's like a hobo channel, like website where you, and they would have like rooms like this. I can't remember the- Habo Hotel. Habo Hotel, yeah. yes, there <laughs> yeah. we go. And yeah, 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 yeah. So it remind when I saw your art, it actually reminded me if Habo Hot Hotel was like in a dark, like super future, uh you know fantasy world where like you know there's a crime scene here you know like there's a story here and i i would love you to, i would love for you to explore more uh with this series but let's talk a little bit about the other thing that you do which is photography yeah that's true yeah i i am known to do that i guess uh i started off i, I ran a skateboard company for like eight years uh, unfortunately, the pandemic took that one out, but uh, that's happened to everybody. Uh, but for the entire time, I was doing the camera work, doing all the videography, a lot of the editing and stuff like that. Uh, basically, everything I did revolved around action sports like BMX, downhill longboarding, like street park skateboarding and stuff. Uh, but then, like, I just decided to branch out. I got kind of bored doing the same thing over and over again because there's not much like artistic direction to capturing skateboarding like you, ahead of time you think of the angle you think of the lighting but that's kind of it you kind of just you take what you're given but with portraiture you can actually set up your shot correctly to how you 
actually envision it in your mind. You don't, you don't just have to like work with the cards that you're given. Um, yeah. And I thought it was really great. Uh, working one-on-one with people is a great experience. Basically everyone I have taken photos of, they always, I saw the question earlier, like, how do you get people to, who think they're not photogenic? Uh, how do you change their minds or whatever? And every single person I've ever worked with always says the same thing. It's like, oh, like I don't look good in photos, blah, blah, blah. And like the feeling of just working one-on-one with somebody, taking their faith in you and then try and then creating a, a, an end product that makes them feel better about themselves. I think that's really fun. Um, yeah, finding uh, customers and booking gigs and stuff in the pandemic economy is different, uh, difficult, but like, thankfully I have other work to support me. Oh, that's my dog. That took me like 15 tries to get. <laughs> yeah. Um, does anyone have more questions for Van? Have them come in in the, in the chat. Um, Oh, I see. I see some questions here. The lighting is cool. Are you a fan of neon lights, and lava lamps and stuff? Yes, I am. I am. Uh, I actually tried to do, I, I was working on like, a, uh, like I was trying to make a slice of a desk where I was going to have like a cup with water in it that was going to have like the, uh, uh, like a laptop like that shining light through the cup. I didn't end up finishing it. Um, but I like the idea of light shining through liquids it, it looks pretty cool i just want to make a video game with you van we, dude i'm i'm down absolutely <laughs> i think like, everyone I, in I, here would want to play that video game too <laughs> i've made tons and tons of games but they've all been 2d you know or like point and click style very simple things i want to make that like a three what if, nice what if we could make environment. what if we can make a a virtual uh gallery in this style uh of your art with this thing like something like that yeah i think that is a a very big possibility uh after this i've been thinking of a lot of ideas after the show (laughs) we should talk about it it, but (laughs) yeah for for now this is this is what i got this is my first attempt i think it came out pretty decent um magic of voxel and blender they're both free if you've ever wanted to like just make a 3D model for whatever reason, highly recommend it. They're not exactly intuitive programs, but YouTube is always your friend in that situation. So. Isn't that always the case right now? <laughs> yeah, that's true, man. What's the point of school and buying college <laughs> if you can just look it up online? Uh, have you ever considered merging? What's the question? Uh, yes. Uh, merging styles uh like putting cgi into photographs i I have thought about that um i feel like i've thought about it as an idea but i haven't had any like really great ideas to make me go and sit down and spend like four hours working on something but i I have thought about it uh there's stuff rattling around up here for sure Van, what are you working on right now is there any specific projects that you're currently working on uh i am making i mean i'm always i i I don't actually make visual stuff that much i make a lot of music uh and i'm working on a a phone game right now i don't know if you've ever played it use a tamagotchi from when you were a kid but yeah i yeah i discovered this new engine i was like learning this new language uh, coding language so i was trying to recreate the entirety of like all the tamagotchis up until like gen five or whatever uh <laughs> but to be used on your phone then that's just like that's just a side that's a side project i have a new company that's starting soon so like I, i've been working my ass off i'm so there. excited to see where your art uh transforms to like i definitely want to see you make some kind of video game out of your art and i know everyone here does so everyone definitely check out van's work encourage him to make more of this art um he's really active on uh, instagram uh van, try, yeah. yeah van <laughs> uh, make sure to thank everyone for thank you so much for submitting oh yeah all, all everyone all the pieces that you guys submitted so been so great so far if anyone wants to collab on something feel free to dm me on instagram later you know i don't bite. <laughs> yeah van's super nice like kind of like the kyle story he just kind of found 
Um, Anyone wants to collab on uh -oh. something? Uh-oh, there's an echo. We're going to get Vivian up uh, now. Um, she's coming up next on our tour. Again, if you're just getting in or if you haven't been here before, uh, let's try to get... Van, do you mind taking off your video, oh, please? Right, right. All right. Thank you, everybody. See you. <laughs> um, if you haven't been in yet, um, there's a bunch of links that people are probably posting in the chat. I actually can't see chat, so um, because I'm giving a tour. But Vivian actually met in Lowell, which is right next door to where I live. I'm right on the border, so I usually just say I, I'm from Lowell. And we met because I was getting um my girlfriend is something for christmas and uh yeah this is uh how i met her and here's vivian vivian tell us a little bit about you and your art hi everyone uh thanks for tuning in i'm really excited um so like andy said i am based in lowell um i've got a studio i share it with my mom we're in western avenue studios and we're right across from the gallery that's there uh, the loading dot gallery which i'm also a member of so i spend a lot of time there um not as much right now but hopefully i'll get get back in there when i get less busy um so i graduated last year uh, from les university with a degree in illustration and during my last couple years at school i started showing at different art markets i was really getting into that and then obviously it kind of just stopped when uh, the pandemic happened um but once it's safe and things open back up again i really hope to continue doing that because i really like meeting the people there and sharing my work with the customers and it helps that you know people buy my stuff so i feel encouraged and um, i'm able to continue doing what i do um, but in the meantime while art markets aren't open i've kind of focused more on figuring out how to uh, grow my business online uh, and promoting myself and that's something i'm I've always struggled with. I'm just, I'm not good at putting myself out there and marketing myself, um, but I've been slowly figuring that out and getting a little bit better at that. Um, and I do, I think I've, we've heard a lot from people. They do a whole bunch of different uh, styles. And I also do a lot of different styles, uh, different materials, uh, but I consistently paint. I always come back to painting animals, even if I dabble in something else. Uh, I've always liked drawing human figures and I've been on a really big dragon kick recently, and I've always liked dragons, but I just recently started painting them um, and mermaids, and then also a few plants. And uh, Andy, when you said you met me in Lowell, it reminded me you came into my booth looking for maybe an animal painting, which I have plenty of, as you will see on my website. Um, but then you said, if you weren't gonna buy an animal painting, you would get a plant one. And I had one plant uh, drawing there that you did end up buying. so. Uh, and I usually don't show that at shows, so that was kind of funny. Uh, so that's a, a funny story that I think about from time to time. Um, so since I do a lot of animals, I also do a lot of custom pet portraits, and that really supports me through the harder times, uh, since this is my only income. Uh, so people keep paying for portraits of their pets, so I keep painting them. Um, and at the top of my website, you can see my Etsy and my... Uh, Patreon and Redbubble, so you can browse all that. And there's also links underneath most or all of the uh, paintings that you see on there where it'll take you directly to where you can purchase that. Um, and I do prints and originals and all that stuff. So back to the gallery, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, like I said, I have a lot of different varieties and I can't show you all that tonight, but uh, one of my favorite series is my psychedelic series. And this is an ongoing uh, series of experimenting and exploring. It's really a great place for me to experiment with different color palettes um, and patterns and how they all work together. Uh, and I like to, you know, I have a color chart, so I pick out the colors that I want to use and I try to do something different every time just so I can see what I like, what makes me most excited. Um, and a lot of them, I also like to create like kind of an atmosphere, uh, at least for me personally, obviously it's different depending on looking at it, what they get from it. Uh, but for the B, we'll start with that one. Uh, I wanted something that was really lively because bees are always active, full of energy. And of course the golden color for me, it reminds me of honey and bees are black and yellow. So that's where that came in. Uh, but the orange and pink and blue or teal, whatever you want to call that, 
that reminds me of uh, blooming wildflower fields and bees buzzing around and it's very lively and active. Uh, so that one's that. And then if you scroll over to the elephant, uh, elephants, I know they are uh, dangerous creatures at times and, but, and they're really big and powerful. But to me, they're also really gentle and steady and you know, like gentle, gentle giants. That was hard to say. Uh, so I wanted to kind of show that more side of them more than the dangerous side. So I used cool colors, which are calming to me. Um, I didn't use too many contrasting colors or complementary colors because I wanted it to just kind of be all cohesive in that way um, to get that kind of calm, steady atmosphere. Um, so that's the psychedelics. And if you go to my website under the psychedelic tab, you can see a whole bunch more. Um, the octopus on there, definitely check that out because that one is my favorite, but it didn't fit in the gallery. Uh, that one in the B is my favorite. Um, and then I also have like a cartoony style. I call them nerdy birdies. They are original characters, but they're not limited to just birds just because they're called nerdy birdies. Um, and I've also got more traditional looking, uh, realistic ink paintings and acrylic pet portraits and a bunch of different stuff. Like I said, dragons and mermaids and all that. So. Yep, feel free to go to my website and just explore everything because I got a lot on there, so. So what is a nerdy birdie? So that's what I titled the series. It started, I think my second year in college. Um, I broke my glasses, I just super glued them back together. And then I had to figure out like how to make my own appointment, which for me as an introvert was like really <laughs> terrifying to do it on my own for the first time and get there um, and get new glasses. So uh, a couple days after that, I figured that out. Um, the Nerdy Birdie character was born. Glasses, I wear glasses, obviously, since I just talked about how I broke them. And um, I don't know if you guys know like Beanie Boos, the little Beanie Baby type things with the huge eyeballs. Uh, I really like those. So that kind of inspired that as well, as well as the round shape. Uh, so that's just what I titled them. And it's expanded from there to I did a spider and elephant, so not just birds. So just I've got pins and stickers and stuff. The nerd version of animals. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's really cool. It's really, Thank you. It's such a cool like uh, story about like each each one's so like funny yet like yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. They're they're adorable, and you have pins of them. Yep, pins and stickers and earrings. I don't have them uh, pictured on my website, but I do have earrings too. Um, and someone said it reminds me of Neopets. I actually never really played that game, but I will take that as a compliment. So thank you. <laughs> I'm going to Google it afterwards. Does anyone have any questions or uh, want to know more about Vivian before we have to keep on going? Can start having them in the chat. Uh, I know I am a proud supporter of her Patreon, and it's Thank definitely you. worth it because you get stuff in the mail if you support her. Um, That's monthly rewards, all animal themed. So if you like animals, Patreon, uh, Vivian Rosalie, right? That's your last. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. You go. My, my middle name, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any questions for Vivian? We have time for one. There's one that just popped. I see one. Yeah, I see that. So the question is, if I couldn't make art with animals, what kind of art would I make? Um, I, I don't know. I can't imagine. Like, I've always drawn animals as far as I can remember. I think when I was little, um, I did a drawing of a cat with like seven tails and like six ears and stripes and spots and all that stuff. So I've always been into animals. Um, like you can see right here, I have done a little bit of plants. I don't think that would hold my interest for very long. Um, but I guess when I was kind of in high school before I got into college or serious about art, I did want to be like a concept artist for a video game. Um, so maybe I would do that. And I gave up on that idea a little bit uh, when I got into college because I realized that really wasn't my strength um, as much as I wanted to be. And I still kind of draw people occasionally, but it's, it's not like up to where I would want it to be. Um, so I guess I would probably focus on that and get my skills up to there and do that. And so, I can still do concept art for video games with animals. So it's kind of a loophole. <laughs> Vivian, do you want to tell them very quickly about what happened after we met um, when we were talking about making one of your photos come to life? 
I'm gonna go to your page. Oh, is it the the neon thing? Yes. Okay, so I don't remember how long after it was that we met, but um, I don't know. However long it was, Andy sent me a little video of something that he animated of my psychedelic pieces, um, and he just kind of made it look like a neon light thing. So that spurred an idea for him and then for me afterwards that we should order those. Uh, <laughs> What, I don't know what they're called, but they're the, the string neon string light things. Yep. Um, and try and like make that in real life rather than just on the computer. So that's a project that is <laughs> slowly going on, but you, I'm really excited about that too. All right, everyone, that's Vivian. Vivian, thank you, thank everyone. you so much for submitting and coming and telling us Thanks about for your art. Of course. <laughs> I'm definitely hooked. I, I'm definitely hooked. We're going to keep on walking around the tour. The virtual gallery if you're just getting in this is a good halfway point uh to like kind of take a little stretch uh you know shake it off um because we're gonna have bridget up because we're gonna keep on going but i just wanted to make sure everyone knows all the information um if you have any questions about how to see the gallery how to get involved um people can help you in the chat i can't see the chat because i'm giving the tour but people are more than happy to uh most of the artists on the list will be more than happy to help you. And uh, we're going to have Bridget uh, come up uh, next if she's still here. I know it's getting later. <laughs> I'm here. All right. Hold on. Let's uh, have Vivian. Um, I still see Vivian on, on my screen or something. I As... should be off of it. I don't see myself on there. So. <laughs> At least the video um screen is still there hold on there you are hello hey bridget tell us about you all right um i hope everyone can hear me okay i'm sorry about my background um my name is bridget o'keefe i'm 29 years old um i'm originally from massachusetts but i live in new hampshire right now um my art journey started with uh cartoons anime, animation, video games, comic books, uh, movies. Um, I love all that stuff. Um, uh, I went to school for graphic design um, and I just love making stuff. Uh, so the first one on the left, um, I call this the Reaper. Um, so at the, this was 2018, I think it was, um, but I like vividly remember making it um, this was made digitally with Procreate um, on the iPad. Um, I was listening to a lot of Swedish death metal at the time. <laughs> and so, you know, your environment, you know, that gets absorbed into your artwork, I think. Um, and I got a lot of inspiration from Michelangelo's Pieta statue. Um, I, I just couldn't get out of my head. And I was like, just really, you know, I want to just start drawing and see where this goes. Um, so I had, I usually start with just like a basic concept or a, like a mood. Um, so for this, I was like, I wanna draw a Grim Reaper. I just wanna, I just wanna go for it and see what happens. Um, so this, this came out. Um, I think a lot of people have way different interpretations of this. Um, I think they're all great and valid. I, I, I was just drawn and I, you know, I love shape and form and contrast, lighting, um, all, all that. So uh, yeah, it's, it's just an interesting one. I, I really loved how this came out. And, you know, I, like I said, like all the memories, I vividly remember drawing it when I was doing it. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this one I call the mermaid. Um, hold on, I wrote it down real quick. So this one I call the mermaid. This was 2018, <clears throat> also digital with Procreate. Um, I can't stop using Procreate. <laughs> like it, it's consumed my life now, um, but it's such a great program. Uh, so I believe I drew this in May, you know, like mermaid. And I was like, oh, okay, great, mermaid. We'll start with that. And then it just sort of, it just sort of took over and transformed into this. Um, I drew this in black and white originally and then after a long time, I went back and, and colored it. Um, I'm, I'm, 
I really love, like, I guess my art style is really sketchy. Um, I just, I just love that. I love movement and form, shape, shading, that kind of thing. Um, but the concept I got from this was from, it's from a website called Seventh, Seventh Sanctum. It's a really awesome website with generators on it. So it's great for artists and writers. Um, so it was like a legendary creature generator. Um, and so it, you know, randomly generates like a description for you. So this one was, this being was born from the soul of a fisherman who has passed away. It looks like a whale twisted into the form of a woman. It has no arms. So that was my interpretation of that. And that yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bridget. Yes. <laughs> uh, your work is insane. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> I'm a very big fan. I've known Bridget for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, Tell us a little bit about what you're up to right now that is completely almost different, but still really cool. Maybe tell people what a glow forge is yeah. and what you're making with it. Yes. So um, I think I, I think I said earlier, I just love making stuff. Uh, it can be 2D, 3D, you know, it can be whatever. What I just love experimenting with the process. So um, I got a... 3D laser printer, it's called a Glowforge, and it uh, uses a laser to cut and engrave different material. Um, I primarily work with wood. I just think a lot of wood looks really pretty. And um, sometimes acrylic, sometimes stone, just whatever, whatever I wanna try at the moment. Um, so what you see on the screen right now is my Etsy. I started this up during quarantine um, it was on my mind for a long time. And I was like, come on, Bridget, just, just do it. Just start it. You, you know, what else are you doing? You're stuck in the house. Um, so uh, I, use a, I use the 3D laser printer to make a lot of these like custom um, wood projects. Um, uh, I'll sell prints, stickers, uh, that banner at the top. It's, it's a really old drawing, but it's a hobbit hole because I am a hobbit IRL. Um, I love Lord of the Rings. It's one of my favorite books, movies, you know, franchise, whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, I drew that a while ago. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, big fan of the elven language from Lord of the Rings. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll do a lot of custom products, uh, all kinds of stuff, just, just for having fun with it. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think I think the Glowforge is the coolest thing in the world. And I didn't know what it was until you told me. And then I looked it up and now I want one <laughs> for like ever because it's there's a this... really cool machine. It's such an awesome like catalyst for like art and modern technology. There's a lot of cool things you can do with it. Um yeah i don't even know where to begin like uh does anyone have any questions about uh bridget's work or the things that she's making or there's a couple here in the chat thanks to lindsay uh the first says do you ever set out to make work in full color and end up liking the black and white better or vice all the time <laughs> um i'll even like i just love the look of a, like a sketchy Thing. Like I love the look of sketchy drawings and like, I don't know, I, I, I love all the line work and stuff. And I find, I'm, I don't think I'm very good with color. So uh, I tend to like put everything into the black and white version and then I'm like, okay, gotta move on to the next thing. Um, but sometimes I'll go back and do color. It just depends. Um, but a lot of the time, yeah, like I like my sketch more than I like my line work. Yeah, I drew Bernie <laughs> with his mittens. Um, some of the things on my Etsy are also uh, a portion of the proceeds go to local nonprofits, um, primarily uh, the MSPCA, uh, the Animal Rescue League of New Hampshire, and the Forest Society that primarily uh, is, you know, preservation of 
uh, New Hampshire's forests. So that's something that I'm trying to also do with my work is try to also give back into the community as well. Bridget, I'm so, so, so happy that you submitted your work. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Ridiculously overwhelmedly happy <laughs> that you're Thank here. You. Uh, everyone, please go check out Bridget's work. She's really super nice, as you can tell. And she has a lot of things that you can check out, be it something that you wear to something that you can put up on your wall to a combination, maybe. So, uh, Bridget, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's so nice to meet everybody. We're going to keep on going with the tour. Hope everyone's having a good time. We're getting close to uh, being uh, near some of the final artists. So if you have more questions for any of the artists that you might have missed, uh, Amy's going to be next, Amy Titus. Um, I've known Amy for 12 years, like forever. Are you there, Amy? I am. Can you see my video? Yeah, I can see okay. you. All right. Amy, I've known you for so long, <laughs> so... I could talk forever about you, but let's hear from your own words. <laughs> right. Um, I'm Amy, um, an illustrator and comic artist from Massachusetts. Um, I apologize for my unprofessional video setup, but I'm doing this on an iPad because I don't own a laptop. So it looks like I'm not looking at the screen, but I promise that I am. Um, I, so I went to Montserrat College of Art. Um, I majored in illustration. Uh, I graduated in 2015. Um, before that, I went to Northern Essex Community College and took like a bunch of different art classes. That's actually how I met Andy. Uh, we used to hang out in the dark room together and develop photos. Um, he taught me a lot of photography stuff. Um, but mostly what I do now is uh, illustration and comics. So these two pieces I have in the gallery, um, these are digital paintings. Um, they are based on sketches that I did on site in downtown Newburyport while I was still in college. And over the summer I found the sketches like in an old sketchbook I was going through and I decided to color them because I enjoy coloring a lot more than drawing and I was too lazy to draw anything so I just grabbed these and colored them and uh, wanted to create like a sunset kind of feel um, and then in this first one I added the little kid and the cat to try to make like some sort of narrative going on. Um, a lot of my illustration work is kind of targeted towards kids. Um, I use a lot of animals, uh, nature, fantastical and like magical elements. Um, and I use a lot of bright colors and kind of like landscapey, like open spaces. Um, I rely a lot on atmospheric perspective to try to like give a sense of space. Um, other than like this type of work, I also do comics. Um, I have a autobiographical comic strip series called Casual Weirdo. And it's basically about being an uncomfortable millennial and being forced to function in society. Um, and most of those are in black and white. And when I work black and white, I try to do like really like bold lines and like high contrast um, with like, you know, black, dark black shapes uh, with like minimal shading. Um, and yeah, so I have like a bunch of stuff on my website. I have an Instagram that I post on pretty frequently. Um, I have a Twitter where I post a lot of dumb stuff and complain a lot um but i do post work there as well so you can like check out any of that i think my favorite thing about knowing you for so long is definitely everything but the comics i think really 
I think we all relate to, uh, you know, I grew up with Garfield. We all grew up with like a comic book and yours is like, I relate to all the characters because I know some of them in real life. (laughs) So it's also like you've kind of made like this comic book of our community and some, you know, are so universal. And then some we get to see like, oh, uh, hey, isn't that Katie? Uh, Isn't that uh, Christian, your roommate or something? Or, you know, isn't that uh, so we actually know these people and it's like, oh, here they are in comic book form. <laughs> yeah, I try to like all my comics. I try to. Uh, it's either something that like happened in real life exactly that way, you know, just kind of like slightly adjusted for it to make sense, um, or it's something that's based on something that actually happened. So yeah, there's like always like actual people in my comics, and most of them are cool with me putting them in and then the ones that don't know they're in there i just hope that they never find them but as you also know i have almost every piece of your work in my room including this one uh your illustrations your paintings are insanity uh fantasy uh beautiful beautiful stuff um you know uh does anyone have any questions for amy and her work and about how she even like thought up maybe some of these pieces uh, that she's been working on over the years. Uh, you can have them in the chat. And uh, Amy, if you want to actually start talking a little bit about that, maybe too. Um. So like about these specific pieces, like. Yeah. Tell me about this fantasy world. Like, is it all like one world that you see or is it. Tell us um... more about it. Yeah, I just kind of like, um, I like combining animals and plants together. So like a lot of my, yeah, so like this one, like it's um, like a elk deer creature, but then it has like these flowers like growing off as antlers. So I try to like combine animals and plant life a lot. Um, a lot of them, I just come up with because I'm like specifically looking like I'll look at I'll pick an animal and then I'll like try to find a plant that will go with it um some of them like I've had dreams about so like we have another mermaid here what's that we have another mermaid oh yeah yeah yeah, that was also I also did that for mermaid I know Bridget mentioned like she did her mermaid drawing for that that was from um 2019 I think I did that for Mermaid um but yeah so like most of the stuff I do now is digital um I use Procreate and I use Clip Studio Paint on my PC um but I started off painting with acrylic and casein and gouache um and I still do that sometimes but I'm mostly digital now if there's uh, any questions in the chat, can someone read them? I can't. <laughs> yeah, I can't see them either, so. I haven't seen any at the moment. What are you up to right now in the quarantine? What's um, your new, newest project, or what are you, like, making? Uh, mostly right now, I'm, like... I'm doing some commissions. Um, I do a lot of like pet portraits and people portraits that are kind of cartoony. Um, so I'm doing a lot of those. And then, yeah, I'm just kind of like making comics because I have the time right now. Um, I kind of make comics in like spurts and I've been trying to make one a week. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I've been working on right now. Someone asked if, um, Charles asked if, when is a kid's book coming out? Um, I don't know. It's something I've always wanted to do. Um, I actually made a picture book dummy uh, a couple of years ago. Like I wrote a picture book and did all the illustrations and put it together and sent it out to a uh, publishing company. 
and I heard back from them and they really liked the illustrations they just like the story wasn't that great which is fine because like I'm not really a writer um so I did attempt to make a children's book um and I'll probably make another attempt at some point because it's something I've always wanted to do oh my god yes we need to have an Amy Titus children's book uh everyone definitely 100 percent. all the artists especially amy definitely check out amy titus's work uh i was very excited that you submitted obviously uh we've been friends for so long so it's pretty easy for me to f- fill out all the information thank you amy so much for coming yeah thank you for having me thank you amy So now we're going to be going off to uh, Christine's work in the gallery. And Christine was actually in the Heaventown Quarantine, which uh, we can maybe do a little plug for Heaventown. Heaventown is a community community in Hayroll. It's just beautiful, beautiful community. We used to do lots of shows, obviously, before COVID that had uh, I mean you named it we we would make backdrops out of cardboard uh, lightings and all the local musicians would show up a lot of these artists that you're seeing would be there under vendor spaces and uh, Christine was actually in a quarantine Uh, someone can start posting a little bit about that in the chat so people know how to find it and what that's all about Uh, But Christine, let's hear a little bit about you and what your art is in the gallery. Are you there? Okay, so when I tried to start my video before, it didn't let me, but can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. How are you doing? Okay, good. I can't see myself, so I don't know if like... You're fine. You look great. Just uh, maybe scooch down a little bit. Like back? Like, yep. Not not that much. There you go. (laughs) All right, go for it. Tell us a little bit about you, Christine. Okay, so my name's Christine Ryan. I'm 29. Um, I use she, her pronouns. And I just recently graduated in 2020 from art school. Um, I had originally gone and dropped out and tried to do like the office thing and just decided that I couldn't do that. I couldn't live without doing art. So right now I'm not doing, like I'm not uh, supporting myself solely through art. I still have like my bartending job that got me through college, but I'm like slowly working my way towards becoming a full-time artist. That's the goal. So I don't have a shop yet, but that's in the works. Um, And so for this work, these two pieces are from my senior thesis in school. So it started as a, I started this project as like a group. I want, I knew I wanted to do portraits. I knew I wanted to do collage. And so it was like a group of people that had helped me in some way. So while I was thinking about that, I'm like, well, what, how am I helping? Like, what am I doing? So I decided to use all like found materials to collage and all the found materials like correlate to like who they are or like how they helped me. And then I, so you can find the rest of them. There was like 25 of them in total. You can find the rest of them on my website, but um, I have like this goal to continue it for forever and just do every person I've ever met. So that's like a goal, but I haven't done one since I finished these. I think I got like so burnt out from it, but this one is Max. He, so the people that helped me range from like someone that I just met one time to people that I talk to every single day. Um, so there's like a large array of different people, but this particular one, Max was, um, he worked at the gas station near my house when I used to go there at like midnight to get a Red Bull to stay up all night to do all my homework. And he was just so nice all the time. And so I made him out of like scratch tickets and cigarette packs and stuff that you get at a gas station. And then the other one is my papa, who is like so responsible and such a, like his gas tank, he doesn't want to get below half. And he's just so like rigid and does the right thing all the time. He tries to teach me how to be like that, but I never live up. But so I made him out of 
old envelopes and stamps because I feel like your bills come in the mail and that's that's how I view responsibility I guess um but it was really cool because I got all these envelopes and stamps from like an antique store for like three bucks for like 40 of them and they had like some of them had never been opened so that was like really cool um yeah so this okay so this medium I love to work in collage but I don't like solely work in collage I have no like preferred medium right now I just started like ink block um block printing and so that's like my new fascination um but I do like painting drawing I use pastels I use collage I do like a little bit of everything so I haven't found like my absolute favorite yet but yeah let's that's um fun. let's look at a little bit of some of your other work that you're working on and stuff like that um it brings us to your website um, yeah, so this is the page of just all of the ones from that work. So this is just all of those other ones that I did. Why does this one look so different? Tell us about this one. Um, that one I carved out of beeswax. Because um, at my school, we had a this store called a Restore. And you could just go there when you needed stuff. And it was just things that other people had donated. So like if you had like a bunch of markers that you never use, you could just donate them. And so you could just go there and get free stuff. And I found a huge sheet of beeswax. And so I how, chose to carve. How did you carve it? What did you use? And how did you light it? It looks like it's well, well lit from behind. So for the photographs, I just lit like we just put like a phone light behind it. Oh, okay. And then how did you carve it? So I carved it with just like, um, like clay carving tools. Like first I did like a sketch and drew them and then like marked it on the beeswax with pencil. And then I would just like chip away at it. And I carved it and then I melted it like into those wooden frames. There's another one that's like backlit too from that same like series. It's, it's below the one that's in our gallery. It's below the stamps one. Below the stamps one. All right, hold on. This so, one? no. Sorry. So, if you go all the way to the right on this, yeah, that one. Oh wow! What is this? So that's leaves. And how did that this... I found in my backyard? How did you think of this? Like, how does this even happen? Cause it's so that's my gram. So I knew I wanted to do something like with a tree, like family tree and like roots and something like that. And then I was, I was at, um, this horse stable and I was like walking around in the back and there was this canoe filled with water and disgusting leaves and they had disintegrated so much that some of them were like, just like the veiny parts and some of them just still had like some of the squares. And I was like, I wonder if I could use these transparent ones to make like a portrait. And I did, it was really hard though. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, these are freaking incredible. I I love the, that work. And then you have some of this new, this newer stuff. Uh, I know one of these pieces is actually in the corn zine. Yeah, that was the corn zine one. It's also playing music, but um, we'll just watch the animation. But tell us how, how did, what, what's the story behind this? So I was experimenting with making GIFs and animation. And so um, I was thinking about like everything that's going on, like, in, cause we're all like stuck in our homes. And so I was just thinking about like, what's going on like in everyone's homes and how it's like so different for so many people. So some of them are just like, someone just counting the days. Some of them are people like hoarding toilet paper. Some people have no toilet paper. <laughs> um, some people it's like their cats having conversations about like, you know, when are they leaving? Um, and then there's some like dark stuff where it's like abuse happening or alcoholism and things like that. Wow. That's pretty deep. <laughs> <laughs> 
Does anyone have any questions for uh, Christine and uh, her work? And uh, as those questions come in, um, let's talk a little bit like, so how, did you just recently start doing animation? Did you study that? Did you take any classes? Like what's that story? So no, so I did, uh, I majored in illustration and then I just got so bogged down drawing on a trackpad, but I couldn't um, commit to like buying an iPad for Procreate, but then I got one for Christmas one year. And so they have like the animation option on there. So I started experimenting with that on Procreate and then I just like really mm. liked it. Mm. Did any questions come in for Christine? Yeah, there were a few here. Um, well, one was, do you make stickers? Because they wanted something that was on the screen. I'm sure it was one of, maybe one of the collages. Um, and then oh. an interesting question. Um, have you ever considered casting those carvings for resin? Mm. Oh, no. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. And I don't make stickers, but um, soon when my shop is open, I will have stickers. And someone asked, will you come paint my house? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's another thing. I've been like really into murals lately. Want to show, want me to show them the newest one that you just made? Or yeah. the one in your, it's in your own bathroom? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, that's on Let me bring it up. Okay. And then we're going to be getting everyone ready for our musical guest soon. I'm so excited for that. Uh, he's going to be introducing himself and playing us a couple songs while I walk around the gallery, or you can go walk around the gallery. Um, but this is your, your bathroom, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, this is something that you can make for someone's house. Is this what you could do? <laughs> yeah. Do yeah. you want hand painted wallpaper? Comment. I love this. Is it like a... this is So that was Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you talk. <laughs> yeah, so that was before um that was like the people that lived there before the picture. And then that's my friend Jenny. She was my accomplice. And yeah, that's the bathroom. Yeah, I want you to paint my entire house. This is awesome. <laughs> You should make your own wallpaper or something. I know. I was thinking of maybe doing some like surface design for like. Look at that. I know that a lot of people are not doing actual wallpaper, but they'll just do like one large it's such wall. such a funky, yeah. funky bathroom now. I mean, before. And then after. Hello. <laughs> 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 that's so rad that's so cool how long did that take so it took us two days oh so you could just be in and out in two days like would that be something that you could provide yeah if i have if it's not their only bathroom i never have to like get out and take a break <laughs> <laughs> there you go well, Christine, I am so happy that you submitted. We've been talking a lot about your work, a lot about what you want to do next. Do you have any idea what you want to do next this year? I think my main goal is just like opening up a shop. That's but like artwork wise, I want to make like a ton of like linoleum prints. I'm so obsessed with that. Someone just asked about stamps. So I'm glad that you said that. There you go. Yeah. That's a really good idea. So, Christine, thank you so much for submitting and, and being here. Thank you for having me. Definitely, everyone, definitely go check out Christine's work. Uh, she's super duper nice and extremely talented and doing, like a lot of us art artists, we have to become uh, flexible. Uh, me as a photographer, I'm like, last week I was doing real estate, the week before doing couples, the other week I'm um, doing stop motion. So you just kind of take on all these roles. But we're going to actually start having some musical performance. Uh, Steph Derwin is going to be coming on. 
And he's going to introduce himself. Hi. Um, my name is Steph Derwin, and I'm so happy to be here with you. Um, I am a musician, and I manage a record label called Trans Trenders, which signs Black trans artists. And um, yeah, I'm so excited to play some songs for you. Thanks for having me, Andy. And this was so, like, all of the artwork is so amazing. Like, I'm over here just giddy, like literally just giddy. Um, but yeah, um, I can hear reverb in my headphones now. I'm going to take this out because it's too much. <laughs> and you can probably hear it, but just pretend like I'm in a big, it's big, a, it's a little, big it's art a little, gallery. It's a little loud art. if you can hear me. Um, but yeah, so I was thinking about what songs to play today, and I figured that you know, it's almost Valentine's Day, so I should play some love songs. And then I thought, you know what, though? So many people are not in a relationship for Valentine's Day because they were in a relationship, but that shit was not healthy. So we're going to sing a song now about, you know, you're in this unhealthy relationship, but you're just going to try to enjoy it while you can. I'm realizing that. Can you hear me still okay? All right. I just want to make sure I don't overpower you. I think my mic accidentally got nudged, like the level got nudged up too loud. Okay. So, without further ado, this song is called When the Summer Ends. <laughs> When this summer ends I'm gonna miss waking up at 2 p.m. Put a bacon, egg, and cheese right here I'll eat it while I drink cheap beer, yeah When this summer ends I'm gonna miss those colorful weekends spreading pride like california fire dressing up in all red leather attire but most of all i'll be missing you your mullet in the sun your fickle little mood when this summer ends i doubt We'll still be friends. When this summer ends, I'm gonna start finally going to the gym. Maybe try a salad or two. Get a therapist who shares my point of view. But most of all, I'll be sharing you. You jump from crowd to crowd to whoever's cute. When this summer ends, I doubt we'll still be friends. So darling, why don't you stay? Let's watch this trashy movie. In my arms, don't you feel safe? But at the end of this Netflix and chill, getting creeped out by the horror and thrill, holding on tight to each other's attention. Most of all, I'll be watching you. You're always on your phone, scrolling or posting nudes. When this summer ends, I doubt we'll still be friends. I doubt we'll still be friends. Clapping for everyone, by the way. Sorry, I'll hear you for a second, because my uh, my earphone fell out of my ear. But yeah, um, thanks, Andy. And um, 
I want to just share that I'm doing a little fundraiser right now for the record label um, to help support black trans artists. So if you like what you hear or if you feel inclined to um, to help kind of like, you know, really show tangible support to um, black trans people and black people, especially during Black History Month, then um, definitely like welcome your support. So this next song is one about, um, it's kind of more from the angle, you know, keeping on the theme of love. It's more of um, from the angle of self-love. And sometimes, you know, life is just hard. And it's a song about kind of giving yourself a break when things do get hard and you are having kind of, um, you know, emotional reactions or like a difficult time. So. I know you've been waiting for the moment to come. I know you've been waiting patiently, patiently. You practically put the safety back on your gun. But you're still so protective of your agency, agency. I can see your jaw is tight from all the hand holding you do. I can see the wrinkles by your eyes. What are they saying about you? Are they from years of smiling? Or are they from squinting through the bullshit? It's okay to take a break from being so strong. It's okay to stay away when the feelings are raw. It's okay to pave a new way when you don't belong. It's okay to turn your back on all the haters. I know all you want is a family to love. I know all you have is tension and strain. I know every time you call, you barely talk. I know all it does is just bring you pain, bring you pain. It's okay to take a break from being so strong. It's okay to stay away when the feelings are raw. It's okay to pave a new way when you don't belong. It's okay to turn your back on all the haters. Who am I gonna call my family now? Who am I gonna call when I'm feeling down? Who am I gonna call on my behalf? Who am I gonna call? Oh, oh, It's okay to take a break from being so strong. It's okay to stay away when the feelings are raw. It's okay to pave a new way when you don't belong. It's okay to turn your back on all the haters. Mm. I'm clapping for everyone. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You know, I was just going to say um, the, the, the funny thing about um, performing during quarantine is you get very 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 comfortable with the silence <laughs> <laughs> or you develop anxiety <laughs> uh, one, of those one or the other yeah, yeah, yeah. 
night you know i'm oh feeling i'm you know oh my god yeah night is still there it's just it's buried it's buried deep um <laughs> so this last song is one um to sort of bring attention to black history month and i think um you know It's been very, very interesting over the past couple years that I've been working with Black trans people, you know? Um, I guess when I first came out as trans, um, a lot of what I was thinking about was like surgery and, you know, access to hormones and just transitioning in my daily life and will my friends accept me and whoever else. Um, and I think when I started working for trans trenders, I just kind of realized that my reality as a trans person, as a person in the world, was just very different, very different um, from what their experience was. And I remember this one time, uh, me and, oh my gosh, it was wild, like seven black trans artists drove up to Montreal we had a full day planned. It was, um, we woke up early in the morning, like 7 a.m. And we had to, we had to be at the radio station at 7 a.m. We did a radio show. And then that afternoon we were going to play at a university. And I was driving and I dropped the artists out front of the school and went to go park the car. And they weren't allowed in the building. And um, the security people there just like, didn't think they were there for the show and didn't believe them. And um, I went to go park the car and I came back and um, I was like, you know, what's going on? Why aren't, why aren't y'all setting up, you know? And um, I had to explain to the security guard that, you know, no, we are in fact here for this show and like they deserve to be here like just as much, if not more than I do. And what the fuck? And um, it was super uncomfortable. But, you know, just knowing that I had that privilege in that moment, it was just like such an explicit thing um, that, you know, I could not ignore that. But I also think about, you know, like the resilience of Black people, like, um, you know, multiple artists on the label at different times like throughout working with them have actually been homeless and have slept on my couch um and i remember this one artist who was sleeping on my couch for a while i think he was with me for maybe a month and um <laughs> i just remember he was he's so positive he's like one of the most positive people i know and he's had these like ridiculous life circumstances that literally like i didn't believe it and you you really wouldn't believe it but he had nothing he had absolutely nothing he had no one and um i remember talking to him one day and i was like how are you so like positive when you know there's just like not a lot of direction and you don't know where you're going and you don't know where you're gonna be you know like what is that and he was just like you know I got myself, I know myself, I got God, I know God, and that's it. And I'm just gonna keep going because I, I literally have no other choice. And I think that's something that really stuck out to me is that having no choice. Um, I think that it's sometimes something that we take for granted when we're living in our society of like, oh, okay, yeah, I remember that I need to like support black people or I remember that I need to, um, you know, just be better and like use my privilege for good. But that act of remembering is a privilege. It's a privilege that you get to remember that, you know? Um, and by this time in the song, I don't know how many minutes it's been since I've started talking into this microphone but that's the point the point is that if you're spacing out a little bit right now that is that is a privilege that you have and um in the work that I do and 
as like, you know, I move through the world, sometimes I forget. I forget that, um, you know, I can move through the world and forget. And I forget that I forget. And that's really fucking weird to think about. And also a really, 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 really big responsibility. Yeah, thank you. That's it. Wow. Sorry, that, you know. No, that's awesome. Improvised, an improvised song. No, I've. I always I kind of miss those. Um, it's it's funny. I, I, you know, I'm a musician too. So like, I, I feel like there are times where it's that. That's what, you know, my music becomes sometimes. It becomes like I'm just playing noodles almost on the guitar and telling a story that uh, needs to come out. And that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I guess uh, I'll show my face again. Hmm? Oh, I, yes, show yeah. my face. <laughs> You're Andy. No, well, thank you. Thank you so much for performing. Thank you. You're for right. real. It really means so much. Cause, yeah, um, let's do this again, huh? <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so I'm just going to be uh, ending things now. Um, if... Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit kind of like what we talked about in the beginning again, uh, just in case if you did miss it and if you've been this far with us, um, you can uh, put me on the screen. Uh, and I don't know how to do that from where I am. Here, let me start video. Does that work too? Am I? Yeah. Looks like that. There's two of me, though. Yeah, and if you could make me a co-host, because I made you the main host, then I can. Um, I think I think Steph is still pinned, so everyone's not seeing you here. Here, your co-host. Does that work? Here you are. Hi. Hello. <laughs> All right. So I'm just gonna kind of go through everything. Obviously, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching this experimental show. Uh, it went 10,000 times better than I thought it was going to go. Uh, I've only done testing maybe three or four times uh, with smaller groups, so this was awesome to test it with everyone. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go through a little bit of uh, the things that I want to go through. So, again, our mission of uh, Virtual Vortex Gallery is to always create a safe space, open space, where all artists and art is welcome always. No one is turned away. No art is turned away. Vir Vortex Gallery's mission is to always give any artist, musician, a chance to be on its platform virtual platform no matter what race gender sexual age if you just started or if you've been doing art for years uh, vortex gallery is just a space where you're welcomed but if you disrespect and you have hate speech that's for somewhere else not here not today uh it's for therapists um and i've been talking to a lot and i recommend it to everyone uh, so if you are interested and talking to someone about that text home to 741 741 i highly recommend it's a great resource uh we all need it right now um just need another uh ear um i mean we can talk about this funny stuff again but you know the bathrooms are always wherever you want them to be you can always go outside it uh nature is our toilet and we treat it like that uh <laughs> grab a drink um and it's cool to be kind super nice be super nice be respectful um let's 
talk about. Um, make sure to like us, follow us on Facebook. Um, we just started this. This is our first show, but I definitely know I want to do it again. Um, I want to thank uh, everyone who submitted, including Saban, Kyle, Lindsay, Ula, Sam, Van, Vivian, Bridget, Amy, Christine, Steph for performing, Katie for hosting, helping me host, um, everyone that showed up, um, please, please, please tell your friends um, to check out all the different things. There is going to be a video of this if you missed it. Uh, and you can recommend they watch it. Maybe a couple days from now, you gather up with a date and you watch this together and be like, hey, you missed out. That's a really cool thing that we can give uh, to the community right now. And everyone go check out the artists. That's what this is all about. Every artist check out another artist. Discover someone new uh, and, and, and explore what that's like, what that's going to change in your life. Um, you, you never know. You never know. You might, you might meet someone that now they're in your life and now you're making art together. And we're, we're talking about doing art nights um, where we all get on, on this platform and, 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 and create together and we just put on music or we put on, uh, you know, maybe we'll have a performer or whatever. But it's just to, to get the, the community together. Um, Vortex Gallery is going to be a, hopefully an ongoing thing um, from now on. So I really, I, I, I can't thank anyone, you know, everyone enough. Uh, my parents for obviously putting up with me in quarantine. Um, I have to live with them right now. <laughs> um, as you know, times are tough. Uh, I, uh, I had a lot of free time in the winter. It gets really slow for me. So I just was like, I want to make this. And I want to make this reality for uh, virtually bringing everyone together. Um, there's a lot more I probably should say, um, but the best thing I can say right now is please, 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 if anything, uh, affected you tonight, please let me know. And you can let me know there's a survey in my, uh, link tree, which someone can post on all the chats. Um, and they'll be kind of slammed everywhere so people can see it, but it's the last link and it says like survey. And if you could just tell everyone that you might have known that was interested or maybe after they watch the whole stream, um, we're going to we're going to make it available so you can watch it at any time. Um, so it's like Netflix and chill, you know, uh, grab some popcorn, enjoy the show. You know, maybe you had to leave early. Maybe you had maybe you were only here in the beginning or maybe you just came at the end um every artist deserves their spotlight right now uh in this community uh we we have just gone through so much um and i think we don't even realize how much trauma uh each thing does <laughs> it makes us do things we've haven't done since like high school sometimes it, it it brings up uh for me it brings up you know things i haven't thought about in a long time i haven't thought about these things and and quarantine brings it to the surface um so i just want to you know make sure everyone knows about the survey that's really huge um and if you do feel inclined there's also uh, a donation um that will go towards future events, um, art nights, um, and maybe even making this bigger because this does cost. The server that does this, excuse me, um, this website and everything costs monthly to do. So um, it's coming, you know, it's coming out of our pocket. So anything that you can give back to the community so we can keep this going because I really, I, I want this to keep on going. Um, but as you all know, we all need a little something uh, to keep going. 
and unfortunately we we still live in a, a world where uh money is a real thing that's in your hand and i want to live in a fantasy world <laughs> where we can live without it one day and that's like the goal but for now in the world that we do live in uh we are asking for any amount um and uh you know donating to trans tenders as well is also a really awesome cause uh stuff oh my god your music so good to finally hear you i definitely miss shows <laughs> but this made me feel like uh i was back at a show and uh i really hope it made you feel that way um thank you all again um i don't know that's kind of where i i had it I